Good morning, everybody. We're live here from Birdhouse. It is Saturday, September 9th, and today I'm going to show you some new and different things that we have here at the store. Things to attract birds to your backyard, especially with us getting into fall migration. You might see that the traffic is picking up at your bird feeders, especially if you have some of these birds that migrate through. Blackbirds are a good example of that. Gross beaks, if you still have them. Um, so you might start to see or be seeing already an increase in activity. And I can show you some of the different seeds and feeders we have for these different birds as they're coming through. As always, you can say hi in the comments if you're on. We always like to know who's here. Um, or if you have any questions, you can throw them in there as well. And we'd love to know what kind of things you're seeing. So you can put those in the comments also, especially if you still have things like Orioles or hummingbirds. It seems like a lot of people are getting a ton of hummingbirds, but the Orioles are kind of hit or miss that they, some people still have them, some people, haven't seen them in a couple weeks. So in general, we like to say if you haven't seen the bird in a, a week or maybe 10 days or so, it could be time to take down the feeder, especially when it comes to Orioles. Hummingbirds are a little different um, because they will really be migrating through throughout the whole month of September. So you might want to keep those hummingbird feeders out for longer, even if you haven't seen any in the last few days. But as always, we love to know who's on so you can put your comments and questions in the comments here. And um, yeah, I'll show you some of the different stuff that we have. As far as seeds go, that's probably the most common thing people put out in their backyard for birds. So we do have some different blends. And during migration time, especially, they are going to want more fat, more protein. As the, as the temperatures drop, you'll see that as well. So giving them things like sunflower seed is always great. We have things like shelled sunflower, peanuts. Our best-selling blend of seed that we have is our own recipe. It's called Chickadee. Probably familiar with it if you buy your seed here at the store. So this is our best best-selling blend. You can buy it in five pound bags. We have it in 20 pound bags. Um, we also have all of our seed 20 pounds or more with our buy, uh, buy for get one free program. So if you go through a lot of bird seed, that's a really, really good way to save on it. You can save 20% on your seed and you don't need to take it all at once. So you can prepay for it and then just pick it up as you need it. So just in case you didn't know about that, we do have a whole bunch of savings programs like that too for your seed, especially if you go through a lot of it. There's different ways that you can save on your bird seed. So the chickadee blend is our best, best seller. There's really something in here for any kind of bird that's going to come to a seed feeder. So it's got your black oil sunflower seed. It has the striped sunflower, which is the larger kind of gray sunflower seed. It has safflower in it, which the cardinals love. It has the shelled sunflower or the sunflower hearts, which are good for the small birds like goldfinches and chickadees love that. And then there's also peanuts in there. So again, chickadees really like the peanuts, titmouse, uh, nuthatches, woodpeckers, blue jays, they all love this kind of thing. So the chickadee blend is our best seller, but if you're looking for something that doesn't have shells on it, we do have other things as well, like our woodpecker blend. This is what I put in my bird feeders here. It's a really good mix and there's no shells. So it's a lot of sunflower hearts and sunflower hearts are good for just about any kind of bird that comes to a feeder. So anything that eats seeds really does eat the sunflower hearts. The black oil sunflower attracts a lot of birds, um, but some of them have an issue, a little bit of an issue cracking it open with their beaks. So you can't go wrong with the sunflower hearts that are in here. And then it's got the mix of peanuts in there. There's pumpkin seeds, there's some fruits. So the, this is our woodpecker blend. It's a pretty high end blend, um, but there's something in there for everybody as well. But if you're looking for something without shells that will still attract a whole bunch of different birds. You can still, you can do just the sunflower hearts. So this is just the insides of the sunflower. So you don't have to worry about raking up shells or anything like that. So just about everything that comes to a bird feeder will come to the sunflower hearts. You can't go wrong with this at all. And we've got this in 20 pound bags as well as 50 pound bags. So if you go through a lot of it, we do have it in the 50 pound bag. And then another thing you might want to either add or you can put in a totally separate feeder on its own are the peanuts, especially these peanut pickouts. Again, if you're looking for something without shells that won't make a mess, 
in your yard, these peanut pickouts are awesome because it's just the insides of the peanuts. And the chickadees love this, nuthatches, woodpeckers, blue jays. So you'll get a really good diversity of birds by adding peanuts. So you want to put it somewhere with, that the squirrels can't get it, especially. Um, so we do have squirrel proof feeders. You can always squirrel proof your setup if you've got a pole you can add what's called a baffle to the pole so the squirrels can't climb up as long as it's high enough as long as it's about four or five feet high the squirrels can't jump over it to get to your feeder so keep that in mind and one new product that we have if you do have a baffle on your pole at home you probably know that it gets a lot of gunk on it gets a lot of debris it gets a lot of droppings on it we just started carrying this it's called baffle buddy and you put this on your baffle and it acts as a um, as a deterrent for any of that so it makes it just kind of run right off so this is brand new if you've tried it i'd love to know what you think about it uh, i just started trying it at home so far it seems to be working really really well uh, but i'd love to know your feedback too if you've tried it at all so this is brand new we just started carrying this and we have it over in our hardware section in the store by our baffles so you can make it so you don't have to clean them off as often, which can be a bit of a chore. Um, another thing you can do if you are getting squirrels, which is an issue and you don't have a squirrel proof feeder or if you can't put up a pole necessarily, we do have seed that's been treated with the hot sauce. So you're probably familiar with some of these. Uh, we've got one called Sizzle and Heat. We have one called Flaming Hot Feast, which is super popular. But the company that makes Flaming Hot Feast just came out with this called burning love and what it is it's those sunflower hearts like i was just showing you so it's the inside of the sunflower seed but it's treated with the hot sauce so the squirrels won't eat it they have more taste buds than the birds do so the birds just don't taste it and the squirrels do so it's a really good way to keep them off of your feeder so this is brand new a brand new product from the company called mr bird which you're probably familiar with um if you've been in the store you've probably tried some of their stuff they've got a lot of good good things for your backyard birds so that is brand brand new just came out so we've got that on our shelves here at the store and as the temperatures drop you might find that birds are coming to your suet feeders more often. We do have some new styles of suet feeders. We also have some new suet in stock. So there's this company called Bird's Choice, which you're probably pretty familiar with. They make a lot of these paddle tail feeders that we promote all the time. And the idea with the paddle tail feeders is the woodpeckers will cling onto the mesh here, and then they use this little prop to prop their tail up so they're upright and they're not just kind of flopping around on the feeder. So Bird's Choice makes a whole bunch of different paddle tail feeders, and they started coming out with some new ones. So this one's really nice. It almost looks like a wood grain, but it is actually recycled plastic. So it's made out of old milk jugs, and they are making a whole bunch of stuff. Most of their stuff now is all made out of post-consumer recycled plastic. So this is one of them. So it looks like a wood grain, but it is in fact recycled plastic. So this one just came in um, not long ago. So this is a new paddle tail feeder. They also have um, one that's a teal in color, just like this one here that has a paddle tail, but then they just started making these also. So they're smaller. They don't have the paddle tail feature, but some of the smaller woodpeckers, like the downy woodpeckers, for example, can just cling onto the edge of it here and still feed. So they made these in the teal color. We also have some in a kind of like a purple lilac color. So if you're trying to give your backyard a little bit more color, we have a whole bunch of new feeders from them that are more colorful. Some other examples of those are these, same company. They came out with these, again, smaller suet cages, so they don't have the pedal tail on them, but they hold two suet cakes, one on either side, and the middle is a bright color. So we've got them in green, we've got them in blue, we have them in teal, we have them in green and orange and yellow. So again, really nice, brightly colored things if you're trying to give your yard a little bit more color some new suet feeders and we do have some new suet in stock too very exciting a brand new company that we just started carrying called hungry bird and these are new 
Sue at Cakes here. And so far, the feedback on these has been very, very good that the birds are just devouring this. So this is, these are Sue at Cakes, but then they also have a filling in the center. So this one's a cranberry filled. Um, the person who works for the company said they almost look like Fig Newtons, which I suppose is true. Um, but these are really great for the birds. So this one has cranberry filling. And then we have this one too, which has peanut butter filling in it. So these are brand, brand new from a company called Hungry Bird. They just came out and we have both of these in stock too. And this is a product we've carried in the past, but we've been out of it here and there. So I thought I would show this off again. This is just the natural beef suet. If you have issues with things like starlings and grackles devouring your suet, even squirrels really, uh, try this high energy pure suet it's called. So there's no fillers in it. There's no seeds in it. There's no peanut butter, nothing like that. So it's just the beef fat. It's just the suet itself. And it can take the birds a little bit to get used to it, but this is really good for the woodpeckers and you tend not to get things like blackbirds and squirrels eating it. So this is just called pure suet. So it's just the natural beef suet. So we have plenty of this back in stock. So this has been pretty popular with people as well. So we've got some new and different suet things for you. And then not new, but I thought I would talk about them because they are really popular are the seed logs, just like how I was showing you those sunflower hearts that are treated with hot sauce. We do have these seed logs. Same idea. This is the Flaming Hot Feast. This is our bestseller here. It is a whole bunch of different seeds. There's sunflower hearts, there's peanuts in here, there's mealworms, and it's all coated with hot sauce. So the squirrels won't eat it. Um, the label has a chipmunk like going bonkers or squirrel that is not having a good time. So they don't eat this, but the birds absolutely love it. So we have plenty of this in stock and we do sell these by the case too. So if you sell or if you buy six of these, this is the large size, you get one for free. So if you're going through them really quickly, we have all of our suet and suet logs all in cases and we do have case specials on everything too. So for the smaller logs like this one, um, they come in cases of 12. So it's by 12, get one for free, but you can always do that as well. So this is the safflower. This is the favorite of the cardinals and squirrels don't really like it. The blackbirds don't really like it. So again, if you're having issues with blackbirds, especially during migration time, if they're really hungry and eating all your food, try the safflower because they really don't like it, but the cardinals still do. And these are nice because it takes the birds kind of a while to eat, to eat through them. They don't just like with the, the seed feeders that you fill with that, the loose seed, they tend to just grab some and then fly off with it. Uh, but these seed logs, it takes them a while to kind of peck at it and to devour it. So you'll probably find that these last quite a bit longer. Like these, look, these, these about this size tend to last I don't know, about a week or so in my yard. And then sometimes these bigger ones will last like a week and a half, two weeks. So they do last quite a bit longer. And you don't need anything very fancy to put them on. They have a hole drilled through the center of them. You can kind of see that. And they just sit on a feeder like this. They just slide on that rod in the center. And that's all you do. gotta do. You just hang them up and it sits on here and it's got a perch there and the birds just go crazy for them. So that's a lot of fun and kind of in the same idea uh, you might have fed things like this but in the shape of bells we have seed bells and things like that we just started carrying these little seed sticks so it's the same kind of idea you can put these all over the place they're just little sticks that come in different flavors if you will different ingredients and they're covered with suet and some different seeds and people have been really like liking these too they're just a couple of dollars and you can hang these all over the place to attract different birds. So we've got these in stock now too. And if you're thinking forward for the holidays, they make really good stocking stuffers. So if you're looking for somebody who's hard to buy for, we'll have plenty of those. And then we do have window feeders. We have a bunch of new ones back in stock. Uh, these are really, really popular, especially as the weather starts to turn. Now would be the time to attach them onto your window because if you put them on the window while it's too cold, they can just fall right off. The suction cups don't really stick. So you want to attach them when it's at least 50 degrees out. So now would be a really good time to get these on your window and ready for the winter. But they're great because 
you can just attach them to your window and the birds will come right up close to you. These are super popular with teachers and classrooms or if, um, you know, if you've got pets, they love to watch uh, all the activity that comes to the window. Really easy to fill. The top just lifts off and you can just fill it and you're good to go. So we've got those in. And then we've been getting a lot of questions about feeding crows. A lot of people who really love the crows. They're really smart. They're fun to attract. Um, there's all kinds of stories about if you start feeding them, sometimes they'll bring you back gifts like shiny objects, which I've never really experimented with. But um, one way to attract them is with something that's really what really open so because they're so big they're not really going to come to one of your tube feeders or um, you know something too small so they're, they're going to need a lot of perching room so we do have these hanging tray feeders like this we also have some that are larger that are on legs that you can just stick on the ground and with something like this i would put for the crows you could do corn they do like and eat corn you could do crack corn i would almost do whole corn which are the kernels of corn, but then they'll also eat sunflower seeds, they'll eat peanuts. So you could use just a typical backyard bird blend in your tray feeder to try to attract the crows. And um, you might see them making a lot of movements in the during the day. They'll kind of go out to their, their sites where they hang out during the day and they forage. And then they, at dusk, will kind of come back to where they roost. So you might be getting some of that activity going through your yard and you can try to attract them a little bit more with something like that that's wide open. And I was showing you the different types of seeds and some seed blends that we have. Here's a new style of hopper feeder we just started carrying. I was showing you some of the suet feeders and some of the brightly new bright colors that we have. Um, we do have some hopper feeders that are a little bit brightly colored more so than some we've carried in the past. So we have these lavender ones, we've got some in teal, we've got some in green. So we do have some new hopper feeders. And then there are some new mesh feeders like this that are also very colorful, which are fun. So again, if you're looking for some more color in your yard, we do have some more brightly colored feeders like this. So um, something that's new, these are the newest feeders that we've got in store. And then finches. So goldfinches nest pretty late in the season. They really don't start until July. So you might start to see those juveniles out at your feeders. You've probably seen them already. We do have lots of different finch feeders. We do have some that are part of that really brightly colored collection like I've been showing you. But some of our most popular ones are just the simple tube feeders that look like this. And um, what makes them a finch feeder as opposed to a sunflower feeder are the holes are super small where they the seed comes out so they just have these tiny little holes i don't even know if you can really see it there because the seeds are super small so they will eat niger seed or we have this finch blend which is super popular it's a mix of niger and ground up sunflower hearts and this is called finch favorite and most people who have tried who started with niger and then Switch to Finch Favorite have been sticking with this Finch Favorite because they really do like those ground up sunflower hearts, which are in there. So the Finch Favorite, I would highly, highly recommend. And you might get more than just finches coming to it. You might get things like chickadees and nuthatches. So um, it's a really good blend in that regard. And I do really like these just kind of basic tube feeders here for the finches, especially with the ones with the bases that pop right out. You might find especially as the season goes on, if it tends to be rainy or wet or in the, the winter, if it's really snowy, if moisture gets in here, you, you might start to get mold in the bottom. So having a feeder that has a base that's easy to pop out is really, really good to keep it clean. Another thing you can do, especially <clears throat> with the Niger seed, is because that tends to get moldy more so than sunflower seed and some of the other blends. We've got this product called Feeder Fresh. It's I don't know if you can really see it. It's little granules and it's made specifically for bird feeders. You pour some in the base of your tube feeder or hopper feeder, whatever you have, you fill it with seed and then you pour a little bit of this on the top and it will just absorb some of that moisture that gets into the feeder. So this is the same company that makes the little, um, 
the liquid addition for the hummingbird nectar that keeps the hummingbird nectar fresh longer. So same kind of idea. It's made specifically for bird feeders. It's absolutely safe for the birds, but it will help keep your seed fresh and it won't get moldy, which is really nice. So we do have that. It's called Feeder Fresh. So we've got that in stock here too. And then finally, I will show you a couple more bird things. Um, bluebirds. Some people do still have bluebirds. Um, I see somebody in the comments is asking for bluebird feeders. Uh, we do have a whole bunch. I had pulled one today to show you because we just got it back in stock. It's really small. It's cute. It's simple. It's called the Petite Bluebird Feeder. It has the plexiglass top. It's got some holes in the side so the birds can just fly on in to feed. And it has a mesh kind of perforated bottom here. And this is great for the mealworms, which the bluebirds eat. We're kind of getting out of the live mealworm season here as it gets colder, the, the cold temperature would just kill the mealworms. So we are focusing more this time of the year on the freeze dried mealworms, which will stay fresh longer anyway. So you can put those in your bluebird feeder to attract these guys. And bluebirds are, somewhat migratory. I mean, they're like the robins. Some of them will migrate a little bit further south for the winter. They don't go all the way down to South America or anything like that. They might just fly down to Pennsylvania, or the Carolinas to get to a place that's a little bit warmer, has a little bit more food, but some of them stay here all winter long. So I know a lot of you guys happen to have them all winter long, especially if you have your heated bird bath out. They really like that. And they do like different seed logs that we have like this one comes this flaming hot feast log comes in a style that doesn't have the hot sauce on it called bugs nuts and fruit and the bluebirds really really like that so we do have food for the bluebirds that they can eat all year all year long and finally i should mention some hummingbird stuff because a lot of you guys are still getting hummingbirds um they are migrating so we here in upstate new york we're getting some that are migrating down from canada uh, some of the ones that have been here here um, all season long are still kind of hanging around but they are ultimately going south so you might realize that you're getting a whole bunch of them right now at your feeders because they are fueling up for their migration so definitely want to keep uh, those hummingbird feeders up for a while keeping your hummingbird feeders up won't keep the birds from migrating nothing like that they they know what to do they're programmed to do it so they'll go down south even if you keep your hummingbird feeder up all winter long so you don't have to worry about that about keeping them from migrating and we do have some different and new things too for the hummingbirds so we've had Always, we've carried these kind of basic feeders that are good for the hummingbirds. They're super basic. They're just a, a little tray. You put the nectar inside, and the hummingbirds will feed from the little feeding ports here. These also have what are called ant moats in the center. You can fill those with water. And the idea there is that the ants can't get around the water to get down to the nectar. This feeder especially is really nice. It's called the Humzinger. This one's actually called the Mini Humzinger because it's a little bit smaller than some of the other ones. It has three ports. We have some with four ports. But I like these a lot because you can put these bee guards on them, especially now that we're getting into the fall. You've probably noticed that the bees and wasps are becoming more numerous and they will get, also get more aggressive as they are stocking up there hives for the fall and uh, there's just more of them out there and the food is something that they are after including nectar so you can put these little they're rubber tips which you can kind of see there and they go on the inside of the feeder and the idea with these are that the hummingbirds can poke through these rubber tips with their beak to get into the feeder but the bees and wasps can't so not all feeders have spaces for these nectar guard tips, but a lot of them do. So depending on what brand you have, if you open up your feeder, and if you look, if it's got these little, um, the, if the feeding ports, if they pop out a little bit like that, you can put the nectar guard tips on them. So take a look because you might be able to, to do that as a deterrent to the bees and wasps. They also don't like strong smells like peppermint smells. And we started carrying this 
product. You can kind of see it's a little bottle. It's called Cant. And I opened one up to smell it and it does smell like peppermint oil. And the idea here is that it keeps ants out, but it also can keep the bees and wasps away. So if you don't have a feeder that has space for the nectar guard tips, what you can do is take something like this, or if you have you know, peppermint oil, I don't know if spearmint oil would work. It's worth a shot if you have it, but you can take some of that oil and then just rub it around the feeding ports here, and that will help keep the bees and wasps away. So that's another thing you can do to keep them away, especially as the season goes on. They will just get worse and worse and worse. A couple other things you can do to keep them away. We've got these kind of crazy looking things. Um, you might see things that look like this in trees in your neighborhood or out hiking. But this is a paper wasp nest. It's a little decoy that is supposed to mimic a bald-faced hornet's nest. If you see something big and gray like this in a tree, you don't want to go anywhere near it. It's, it's a bald-faced hornet's nest and they're super, super mean and you, you don't want to get near them. And neither do other bees. They're, they're really, really territorial. So the idea with these are you put them in a space where you're having issues with bees and wasps and because they recognize bald-faced hornet's nest as being so territorial and not wanting to be around them, they tend to go elsewhere. So people use these by their pools, if they have a picnic area, and then also by their feeders to help keep those bees away, bees and wasps. So this is something else that you can try. These are only a few bucks. So it's worth a shot if you've got a lot of bees and wasps that are driving you crazy. And something else you can do is if you've got a little dish, it doesn't have to be, this is just a little bird feeder but, or bird bath. You can take a dish and make it and fill it with really, really sweet nectar. So in general, if you've got just hummingbird nectar or if you make your own, it's pretty sweet, but you can make something even sweeter and try to attract the bees and wasps with that. So your typical hummingbird nectar is one part sugar to four parts water. If you take some sugar and water and make a ratio of more like one to one and put that in a dish somewhere the bees and wasps tend to go to that and will leave your hummingbird feeder alone so that's something else you can do to try to keep them away so there are different things you can do to, to try to deter them you'll probably always have some around but that can help keep them away and another accessory we have for hummingbirds you might have seen or used these before with the hummingbird swings. The idea with these is that hummingbirds are so territorial that they do kind of oversee their territory and defend it. So these swings are kind of crazy looking, but they do really work. You can hang them around the spot where you've got your feeder and the hummingbirds tend to perch on these and just kind of oversee their territory. And if another hummingbird comes in, they kind of chase them away. So we do have these back in stock. And this is a company called Pops Birding or Pops Hummingbird Swings, which we've carried for years and years. But they just redesigned them all and they look really cute. They used to have just little wooden perches, but now they've got these little perches that look like branches. So they redesigned them all and we have them back in stock in different colors. We've got the typical kind of black style and then this one is red with the little hummingbird charm. Um, this is your, this is the one that they've had around forever instead of just the metal uh, perch though now. It's a little branch which is cute and then also comes in teal so you can accessorize your backyard even with your hummingbird swings. So we've got those. And then the last thing which has nothing to do with birds at all but we've been selling a lot of them and getting a lot of questions about them is that we have all kinds of different buffalo bills merchandise to go especially in your yard we've got a couple things for indoors uh, but we've got lots of things for your backyard so we've got these little um, signs you can stake in your yard we have flags that you can put up so this is just a small sample of some of the bill stuff we have so we do have all of that already for Monday night for the first game. So uh, we have plenty of that kind of stuff in stock. And finally, I should mention that we do have wild wings coming in today. So if you're in the Rochester area, wild wings will be here from 11 to 1 with some birds of prey. And you can pop in and see them between those hours, which is always pretty popular. So it looks like a few of you guys are on Duster's on says, hi, Liz, I'm here. <laughs> um, she says they love sunflower, talking about the different types of 
seeds that the birds will eat. Yes, they absolutely love sunflower seed and the sunflower hearts. Stephanie's on says, good morning. We don't have any Orioles this year that I know of. And our one hummingbird seems to have moved on. The goldfinches are still here in abundance, along with woodpeckers, cardinals, chickadees, jays, nuthatches, titmice, and lots and lots of sparrows, starlings, grackles, and pigeons. So, yeah, if you've got a lot of sparrows, starlings, grackles, and pigeons, you might want to try the safflower seed. Um, not only do we have it in the logs, we have it in kind of the suet cake shape. We also have it in loose seed, loose just seed you can pour into a feeder also. And they really don't like it that much. The blackbirds especially don't really eat it. Uh, blackbirds being the, the, the grackles. And starlings don't really eat it either. They're not technically a blackbird, but they kind of get grouped in with them all the time. And they really don't like the safflower either. So you might want to try that. And the cardinals love the safflower. Finches love it. So a lot of the birds that you have will still eat it, but you don't necessarily get some of those other birds that can devour everything and be a bit of a nuisance. Um, Duster says, oh, that would be good. Sunflower hearts. Yeah. So you can feed them sunflower without the mess, which is really nice. So that's what I put in my backyard. So I don't have to rake anything up and I don't have to worry about, you know, animals eating it or my pets eating it, anything like that. And she also says peanuts. Great. Yep. They love peanuts too. Um, let's see. Stephanie says, will the baffle buddy work on weather guards too? Yeah. I don't see why not. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't. I just don't know if it would leave any kind of residue on it, but I don't think so. I don't, th I don't think it will. Yeah. So this baffle buddy, which is made to keep your baffles clean. So if something gets on it, it just kind of slides right off. Yeah. I don't see why that would, uh, wouldn't work for weather guards. Yeah. Um, I will give that a try and let you know. Um, let's see. Duster says that's good. Recycling. Yes. A bunch of the feeders I was showing you are made out of recycled materials. So that is um, that is wonderful. And it, yeah, it is a way to recycle. Um, Duster says, do you have any recommendations as I live in New Mexico? Not totally sure about all the different birds that you might have coming to your backyard in New Mexico. I know there are different woodpeckers and things out there. So the suet feeders would still apply. Um, I'll have to look and look at, at more of the, the Western birds and what, what they would eat. The food's going to be the same. I just don't know exactly which species you guys have out there. Um, but as more and more people are kind of tuning in from all over the place here, um, I'll have to check and see what kind of birds you guys have out there. Um, Ed is on and says, yesterday, hundreds of starlings visit our yard, which is mostly woods. They were off in the ground, frantically picking through leaf litter. And after a few minutes, they all took off in large groups in sort of mini murmurations, quite an event. Oh, how cool. So Ed's talking about murmurations are when you see a group of birds and they're all kind of flying in a group, almost like a school of fish. That's called murmurations and starlings are well known to do that. And it sounds like Ed had quite a big event there happening in his backyard of starlings showing that behavior, pretty cool. Um, Jester says suet cakes. I think she's asking about recommendations for out in New Mexico. Yeah, I, I would say suet cakes out there, depending. I'm not sure what your weather's like this time of the year, but we do have suet cakes that also don't melt. Um, depending on the temperature, you might want to get some of the, the never melt suets just so you don't have it being kind of a sloppy mess in your feeders. Um, let's see. Jester is also saying, do you ship out of state? Absolutely, we do. We have a whole bunch of stuff on our website on the birdhouseny.com. Um, not everything that we carry, and here's our website right here. Um, it's not everything that we carry, but we're constantly adding more stuff on there. We're trying to improve it, and we're working on getting an auto ship feature going on there too. So if there's something that you go through every month, you know, say you go through 10 pounds of seed every month, we'll have an auto ship feature where you can save some money on that and you can get a discount and have it shipped to you every month. So we are working on that. So yeah, absolutely. We ship out of state and um, you can shop online on our website at thebirdhouseny.com. Or if there's something you saw today that's not on the website yet, just give us a call because yeah, we can absolutely put an order together for you and just ship it right out. Um, Duster says they also have 
crows. Um, Randy's on and says, hello. Um, Duster is saying they also have blue jays. Perfect. So peanuts would be great for those blue jays. I don't know if you guys have, if you're, if you have Stellar's jays out there or not, but same kind of thing. They'll come to the same feeders. Um, so things with peanuts on them, with them in it are perfect. So you could do a tray with peanuts. There are peanut feeders. Um, I would recommend probably peanuts in the shell is really the favorite of blue jays. And I believe Stellar's jays too, if you happen to have them out there. I'm not totally sure. Um, let's see. Birdie81 says, where are you located? Do you have an online store? Yes, uh, we are in Rochester, New York. So we're upstate Western New York. And we do have an online store. And that is thebirdhouseny.com. So you can shop on there for all kinds of stuff. And we're constantly every day adding more and more on there. So um, as the weeks go by, you should have more and more stuff on there to see. And yeah, you were asking earlier about bluebird feeders. We absolutely have bluebird feeders. And we have the mealworms for the feeders. They'll also eat nuggets called bluebird nuggets, which are little suet nuggets. We have all that kind of stuff. Um, Duster says, I have lots and lots of squirrels. So you'll probably want a squirrel proof feeder or um, that seed that's treated with the hot sauce is another good way to go. Um, Stephanie says, I use the finch favorite seed and I get downy and hairy woodpeckers at the feeders along with finches and chickadees and nuthatches. I love it. Yeah, so the finch favorite seed, which I was showing earlier, um, yeah, you get more than just finches with it usually. So they really like the, the ground up sunflower hearts that are in there. Every once in a while, I would sometimes get a chickadee at my Niger feeder, but just coming to the Niger, but really they love those ground up sunflower hearts and they're ground up so small that they will fit in those the little holes of your finch feeder. Um, Duster's also saying she has coyotes, so she's got lots of wildlife out there, not just um, not just the birds. Uh, Lynn is on and says, good morning. Yes, the grackles are back. My dogs are good deterrents. Yeah, there you go. You can just release the hounds and they'll uh, scare the birds away. Squirrels too. They do a really good job with that. Um, let's see. Duster says the crows attack my dogs. So yeah, the, the crows are pretty smart. They, uh, they, if they sense a threat, they might go after it. So, um, let's see. Duster says, I do have a problem with ants, the big ones that build giant mounds. Gotcha. So I'm not sure if they will come, well, they might come to feeders, um, too, to get the nectar and things, but we also have, we've got things like ant moats that you fill with water they're a little cup you fill it with water and then you hang your bird feeder from it we do have those we also have this this is called ant uh, uh, nectar fortress it's an ant repellent and this smells kind of like cinnamon because i guess ants don't like the smell of cinnamon and it's a gel so i don't know if you can kind of see it there it's a little tube and you just put a circle like a little line of the gel around either the pole you've got your feeder on or the feeder itself, and the ants won't cross that barrier. So people swear by this. They they love, love, love this product. And I I tend to use the ant moats myself, um, but for people that don't or, or just don't want to or can't, this stuff is awesome. So it's called Nectar Fortress Ant Repellent. Really, really cool. Really, really good. And it works very well. Um, Karen is on and says, good morning. I still have one male Oriole hanging around and a hummingbird. So Karen still has the Orioles, which is great. And there'll be, you know, scattered reports of Orioles throughout the month. Hummingbirds, though, will will have more reports in larger numbers throughout the month. And even into October here and there, people see them. Um, we always get calls early October. People worried that uh, their hummingbirds aren't migrating, but it's totally normal. They are just um, taking their time. Um, let's see, Stephanie says, I saw in your email that benches and bird baths are on sale now. Yay, yes, they are. We just yesterday put all of our bird baths and benches on sale for 25% off. So we've got that sale going too. So lots of stuff going on here. Um, Duster says, I can't believe I got here for this live. Yeah, if you're on the, if you're more out west, it's it's an earlier morning for you. I, I feel ya. Um, <laughs> it can be hard to get up in the mornings. And thank you for, for joining us live. Um, she says, and she also says, Baffle Buddy, is that correct? Yes, that is the name of this, Baffle Buddy. 
Um, this company also, it's the same company that makes this cant repellent that I was showing earlier, the stuff that smells like peppermint oil to keep the ants and bees and wasps out. And then they also make something called squirrel slip. It's in the same kind of container. And you put it on your, your poles to keep the squirrels from climbing up it. They just, they try to climb it and they just fall right off. Um, Duster says, Ed, I would love that. She would love to see a group of starlings doing the murmurations. Um, let's see, Birdie81 is in Alabama. All right, so we've got people from all over the place on here today. And they also say, I am having a tons of tit mice. I had a ton of tit mice this year too, more so than I've ever had. I've never had much luck with attracting them. And this year, they were all over the place. Um, Duster saying that these look interesting. And Birdie81 says, a pole with a baffle works for squirrels. Yes, absolutely, yeah, so sometimes, People with their, their pole slide ups, they get a little frustrated because they're still not working, but you wanna make sure that the, the baffle is high enough that the squirrels can't just jump over it because the squirrels can jump sometimes four or five feet high. So you wanna make sure that the baffle is high enough. It's, if it's only a couple feet off the ground, the squirrels will just jump right on over it and climb right up the pole. So you wanna make sure that the baffle is at least four or five feet up high and it's not in a place where the squirrels can just jump across from something. So if it's by a deck or by your house, um, sometimes they can just climb right up the house or climb on your deck and just jump right across to your pole. So you want to be careful of that, too. They can jump about seven feet across so they can really kind of just um, shoot themselves pretty far. Um, let's see. Yeah, Jessica says, yes, the time is so different for me. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you joining in today. And it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions today. Thank you guys for all the, the comments and questions. And like I said, we have Birds of Prey from Wild Wings here today, which should be very, very fun. They are going to be here soon. They're getting here around 11. So they'll be here from 11 to 1. And they usually have a mix of different hawks and owls, which is super fun. And then, yeah, all of our bird baths and benches are 25% off. We still have a really good selection. And um, we have all kinds of events coming up. So, yeah, visit our website at thebirdhouseny.com, including our photo contest, which will go through September 17th. So you have a little bit over a week to submit your photos still. So that is going strong. You can get more information about that by visiting our website and going to the events section. So we've got all kinds of stuff going on here. And I appreciate you guys for joining in today. We will be back on Tuesday with another live stream. And until then, enjoy your weekend and we'll talk